This week on Culture Q. Your latest show is based on queer cuts and some queer casting news. Another gay movie has a reunion. And we speak to Representative Malcolm Kenyatta. What is going on? Is Ailiwani here? And I'm Char Jocelle. This is Culture Q. And here's some of the highlights from this week in queer culture. Another queer show bites the dust, this time with Peacock's Queer as Folk. If you didn't know, Queer as Folk follows a group of friends and their loved ones in New Orleans, Louisiana. The new streaming series was more of an inclusive reimagining and featured not only gay and lesbian characters, but transgender, gender nonconforming, and disabled community members. Showrunner Stephen Dunn responded to the sad news on Instagram saying, it's a rare gift in these times and in this country to be able to make a show as fearless and unapologetic as queer as folk. He went on to say that he was grateful for the chance to honor the community. Executive producer and writer Jacqueline Moore also shared her disappointment on Twitter. Very sad to say goodbye to queer as folk. I love these people so much and am so proud of the stories we got to tell. Many of the stars shared their remembrances of the shoot, including actor Johnny Sibley, who played the lovable and messy Noah. He also gave a word of caution on Instagram. Keep supporting queer content, y'all. It's not promised. The loss is especially felt in a year that has canceled over 21 shows with queer content. Most notable was Netflix with First Kill and Paramount with Batwoman, Legends of Tomorrow, and Gentleman Jack. This also isn't Peacock's first queer cancellation. Earlier, they announced the cancellation of the Saved by the Bell reboot, despite the show's popularity and high ratings. Although we've suffered some great losses, there are some LGBTQ wins in mainstream media. Billy Eichner's Bros will premiere tomorrow, which is Friday the 30th, and has already garnered positive reviews. The production is made up of entirely LGBTQ plus people, even in the cis straight roles. With Halloween coming up, we're for sure going to get some LGBTQ spooky fun. M. Night Shyamalan's newest thriller, Knock at the Cabin, stars Jonathan Groff and Ben Aldridge as they take a vacation with their young daughter. Of course, things get scary fast with the group, including Dave Bautista and Rupert Grint, take things to a terrifying 10. Joining the creepy ranks will be Hulu's Hellraiser starring Jamie Clayton as Pinhead, and there's even more. For animation fans, Jordan Peele's Wendell and the Wild will arrive on Netflix on October 29th, and Disney's highly anticipated Strange World comes out November 23rd. So don't throw away your rainbow-colored caramel corn just yet. There's still hope on the horizon. Moving on, this month on Reverie's Queer Classics, we are celebrating 15 years of another gay movie. Sending up the horny teen genre and the lack of LGBTQ in them, another gay movie gives us an American Pie style look into the lives of four high school seniors. Just like the American Pie boys, this group also plans to lose their virginity. Only this time, it's a lot more queer. Part of what I wanted to do was kind of push buttons with the film in the spirit of, um, you know, my legends that I aspire to like John Waters. Um, I really wanted to make like a provocative movie that got people talking. Viewers couldn't decide if the film was body or brilliant, or both. Jonah Blackman, who plays Nico, talks about how the role was almost a no for him. It was an education. I know for me, when I read it, I was like, this is so much. Initially, I was like, I don't think I'm, I would be part of something like this. And then I realized how brilliant it was and what Todd was, was saying with this. Um, for our community. For context, Jonah's character Nico is an outlandish, free-spirited twink who has a secret that's eating him up. Each boy has their own personality and their own obstacle getting in the way of them in the end from reaching their ultimate goal. And Stevens wanted to explore these insecurities through laughter. I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing that I learned, the biggest thing I learned from making another gay movie was how much people wanted to have the opportunity to like laugh at themselves. But Stevens wasn't afraid to find the humor and the messiness of sex, dating, and pesky feelings of love. Jonah and I and our whole team wanted to do something totally different and celebrate who we were and be able to laugh at ourselves, you know, in, in the process. You know, uh, I always kind of said like, if, if, if straight people can have like dumb ass, gross out teen sex comedies, why can't gay people? 
Another gay movie will also be given the queer classics treatment with host and comedian Percy Rustamji. Rustamji gets all the behind the scenes dish with Stevens, Fleckman, and stars Michael Carbonaro and Jonathan Chase. And of course, get your popcorn ready for the premiere on October 1st, right here on Reverie. With the U.S. midterms coming up and the ever crucial vote on same-sex marriage potentially happening after midterms, this year's political race is one to surely keep your eyes on. Now, there have been public setbacks, but we have good news coming from several parts of the country. In Florida, pro-LGBTQ candidate Val Demings is a mere two points behind far too long incumbent Marco Rubio. Demings announced her intent to run in 2021 to mostly skeptical ears, though her message has never lost its momentum. I, I don't think there are uh, any words uh, that I know, and I know a few words, <laughs> that can fully convey uh, just how grateful I am to each one of you. Surprisingly, she has outpaced Rubio in fundraising and is starting to look more favorable in the polls. Demings has been openly pro-LGBTQ and was one of the co-sponsors of the Equality Act, saying, our democracy is on a knife's edge, but I believe that liberty and justice are stronger. In 2018, Deming spoke at the HRC's annual Time to Thrive Youth Conference, where she spoke about the importance of celebrating our authentic selves. And I realized that my differences just happen to be my strength. Does anybody in this room know anything about that? Another race to keep your eye on is in Arkansas, where Evelyn Rio Stafford serves as Justice of Peace for her small district in Fayetteville. Rio Stafford is the first trans person to ever hold elected office in Arkansas. And in 2021, just as Governor Asa Hutchinson was about to sign the abusive Save Adolescents from Experimentation, or SAFE, act into law, Rio Stafford was asked to help stop it. Rio Stafford made an appointment to appeal the governor directly. After an hour, Hutchinson vowed to veto the bill. The Arkansas legislator overrode the veto, but the law currently is tied up in court challenges and won't go into effect anytime soon. Making sure you're eligible and registered to vote is key in making sure your voice is heard. Check out victoryfund.org to learn more about LGBTQ and pro-LGBTQ candidates in your state. Moving on to some political news, this week we're talking about super PACs. If you don't know, a PAC is a political action committee filled with lawmakers looking to make a change or keep tabs on lawful practices. This year, a group of like-minded lawmakers came together to form a new one called the Agenda PAC. Pennsylvania State Rep Malcolm Kenyatta serves as a PAC chair and spoke with us about the importance of the PAC and what they intend to do. Representative Kenyatta emphasized why the need was so strong. This country will be a better place when we have elected officials who understand America's better when it's fairer. And I think if you are a bigot, you should not be in office for anything anywhere in this country. And we're gonna do everything we can to beat beatable bigots um, in every single part of the country. In today's climate, the representative understands it can be especially hard to know that your voice matters. You know, to have a Supreme Court justice um, basically put a target on your back and to say that your fundamental and sacred freedoms and rights they're coming after is terrifying. And of course, it's easy to feel justified when you know what you're doing could really help people and even save lives. Not only are we on the right side of history, we're on the right side politically. A majority of the American population in every state supports the right of same-sex couples to marry the person they love across the board. It is an important way to get the country back on track. With the waves of anti-trans and other LGBTQ legislation, the PAC is hyper-focused on making sure the laws reflect the wants and needs of the people. So when you think about this moment, it does feel like so many of our basic rights are on the line, and they are. But I will tell you this, the story of this country, as painful as it has often been, has always been a story of forward progress. And the team have used PAC funds to create ads exposing the truth behind certain candidates. Truth that is easily researchable and important to know when going to the polls this November. October is LGBTQ History Month, and we're celebrating with a group of selections that showcases LGBTQ accomplishments of every kind. 
Our first selection is Queer Classics, another gay movie. Celebrating its 15th anniversary, Queer Classics brings together stars and lovers to talk about the film. Informative and fun segments give you all of the background action on this queer classic. In another gay movie, Andy, Nico, Gerard, and Griff are four gay high school seniors trying to lose their virginity. The boys make a pact to have sex before the end of the summer. Next, there's Before Stonewall. New York City's Stonewall Inn is regarded by many as the site of gay and lesbian liberation since it was at this bar that drag queens fought back against police June 27th and 28th of 1969. This documentary uses extensive archival film, movie clips, and personal recollections to construct an audiovisual history of the gay community before the Stonewall riots. Last, but certainly not least, we have Thanks to Hank. Hank Wilson was a true unsung hero of the gay liberation movement and the AIDS epidemic which followed. Unique in its focus on the impact of the AIDS epidemic on poor people and people of color, the film tells a story of AIDS activism in the years before ACT UP and demonstrates how early gay liberation activists were people with much broader vision of social justice than equal rights for LGBTQ folks. For these titles and so much more, you can stream on Reverie. For over 40 years, a family code has been in place that limited the rights of LGBTQ couples and families. Last weekend on September 25th though, millions of Cuban voters showed up to vote for a new package that would overhaul the previous code. The new package includes the legalization of same-sex marriage and allows LGBTQ couples to adopt children. It also promotes equal sharing of domestic rights and responsibilities between men and women. The Cuban National Center for Sex Education, or Cenesex, has been advocating for years. They happily took to Instagram when this was announced, saying, Love and Affections won after nearly two-thirds of the citizens voted in favor of the package. Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel reported joy, though he acknowledged it may have been slightly tempered as the country prepares for Hurricane Ian. Bruno Rodriguez, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, said, Code Yes was the majority vote. Our people opted for a revolutionary, uplifting law that drives us to achieve social justice for which we work every day. He summed up his feelings beautifully saying, today we are a better country with more rights. Some people may not know, but after the revolution in 1958, queer folks were imprisoned and sent to forced labor camps alongside other political rebels. They were also sent to re-education camps, which basically amounts to conversion therapy camps. And Castro apologized for this mistreatment, saying, if someone is responsible, it's me. But with laws in place limiting rights for LGBTQ citizens, the tension has been growing over the past few years. Homosexuality was decriminalized in 1979, but many rights for queer citizens to live normal and happy lives were missing. From abandoned proposals to canceled pride parades, the country's kinship with homophobia hurt a large part of the population. But now, as of September 27th, Cuba has officially voted to legalize same-sex marriage. The ratification of Code Yes Act will ensure a smoother path for all LGBTQ rights. Well, I hope Cuba will set a positive precedence for other countries who might be voting on similar laws. But that's all for this week's show in Culture Q. I am Shar Jassel. And it's Anilwani signing out. Thanks for hanging out with us this week. And be sure to join us every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, live and always on demand, right here on Reverie. <laughs>